Hello and welcome, friends and listeners, to the Flick and Real Fancast. This is another episode of News and Views. How did you guys like that intro? If you didn't, I'm going to take a word from the rock and say, it doesn't matter what you think. I am here with my host, Mr. Scott Fox. Scott, how are we doing today? Fantastic. Uh, really excited to talk about everything that's going on. Catch up on some stuff. And there's some, there is some stuff. There's definitely Absolutely. Some stuff to talk about. <laughs> Lots to talk about. Uh, as you guys know, or just in case you're new to the show, we are your source for news, reviews, and daily discourse. Uh, and whether you're watching us on YouTube or listening to the podcast or on any of your favorite podcast apps, we're so happy that you're joining us today, and we cannot wait to share our thoughts with you. And thank you for always supporting us. You are the reason we keep doing this every week. We can't say it's for the money. <laughs> Um, and really quick, one day, I'm just going to have this all condensed into a little tag at the end, but before we get going, we just want to remind you guys watching, uh, today's a special episode. This is our, one of our first pre-recorded episodes we've done in about a year. Uh, so, you know, if you guys are catching this on the replay, just make, take a moment to subscribe to the channel here and on Twitch so that you don't miss any of our news breakdowns, late night ramblings, and recently, uh, a couple trailer reactions. Guys, we're like, six people away from 200 subs and then we can have a big subscriber party can't wait for that do a big thank you stream uh thumbs up the video you're our greatest weapon against the brutal youtube algorithm and uh, if you want to support the channel usually when we do a live show uh you see the link down here Streamlabs. right now it's pre-recorded so we're not asking for donations but uh towards the end of the show we're gonna do a little button hook here and let you know all the cool announcements of things to come and so that is when uh, donations and stream labs and things will be very, very important. So for today, we will skip all of that, but let you know, uh, completely unplanned, we're both wearing our Flick and Real shirts. So if you go to the description, you'll see on the very bottom a link to our store, and you can buy shirts that look just like this, or hoodies, or notebooks, or stickers, all kinds of things. All right, so with that, Scott, I don't know if you knew, this marks our very first episode of having a sponsor what yeah, we have an official are we sponsor. legit now we are legit. <laughs> uh today's episode is brought to you by dangerous expectations <laughs> uh here's the thing about expectations avoid them they're no good all right so with that let's get into as you saw we have those all look here. delicious doesn't it? It's like some cycloptic atrocity. The <laughs> I don't know how they messed up giving him two eyes. I don't know. It's it haunts my dreams and lives there rent free. Uh, as you guys saw in the image, we have our breakdown here of all the topics we're going to be talking about. We're going to be talking about the Spider-Man No Way Home second official trailer and what we saw and what we didn't see. A couple clips from Hawkeye. And Disney Plus Day, was it a disaster? Are people overreacting? We'll break that down a little bit. And then we have some personal announcements for the channel. We got some big things to talk about there. So with that, let's crack into our first topic. Scott, I know you watched the No Way Home trailer at least once, maybe twice, a handful of times. Uh Oh, uh, mm. more than a handful. I must apologize. Say that. I have to apologize. I, because I didn't have my notes in front of me for a second, I was about to skip over our favorite segment of the show, which is our trivia. Mm, yes. So we're going to put a pin in it. And uh, sorry, we will be talking about the No Way Home trailer. But uh, where would we be without the Scott Fox trivia? And I got a couple things for you, too. So let's crack well, it up. Well, and we, we've to kind of pared this down for time. We've also decided to limit it to three questions. So there's no more softballs. That everything's real serious trivia no more so softballs. i went zero you, for five last time so now this is not a yes or no question or a right or wrong type of question this is uh this is a question for you as in uh you pick your poison would right. you like will smith trivia or oscar isaac trivia well we're going to talk about oscar isaac a bit today so i'm going to show how much i don't know about Mark Spector himself, and let's do some Oscar Isaac trivia. <laughs> Girl, oh, I don't like that awesome. look. All right. Before For the audio play, listeners, uh, Scott just had a very menacing grin on his face, uh, yes. accompanied with a fantastic laugh. All right. 
So before playing Duke Leo Atreides, Oscar Isaac played what biblical character in the 2006 movie The Nativity Story? Um, is he Joseph? Nicely done. Ah. That was as much of a softball as I could give you today. Nice. In Disney's video game Disney Infinity 3.0, Oscar voices what character? I'm hoping it's Poe Dameron. That is also a softball. And yes, you're correct. Poe Dameron. I was hoping that the fact that uh, it's a Star Wars character, but you're too quick on the uptake. All right. Oscar plays William Tell, a gambler in the 2021 movie The Card Counter. His last name is a nod to a poker term. In poker, what is a tell? Oh, um, a tell is when you look at somebody's face and they have like a tell that lets you know when they're bluffing or lying maybe that is correct it's when they're giving away something based on body language yeah or how they're moving or how they're handling the cards everyone's got a tell and the the best players try and be completely consistent in everything they do so those were uh actually turns out not that hard i do have one extra one that i wrote for fun which character does oscar voice in the 2019 and 2020 2021 sequel for the adams family Oh, um, Gomez Adams. Nice. Man, four for four. It's about time. Should have gone the Will Smith side. It's about time. Um, no, because I got any of those wrongs, I'd get booed <laughs> off the channel. <laughs> All right, now, yes. now we can move on to our first topic, which is a doozy of a topic. And it also has something to do with one of our announcements that we'll get to later today. But the second official trailer for No Way Home was released and it was first released at a big event that they had and i don't know if you did you see images of that event uh yes release of it did you notice who the host was how did i not notice that no the host of the show was my faction manager koi jean drew with tom holland announcing the trailer yes Um, matter of fact on our our live stream he had mentioned that he was going to go meet with or he was meeting tom holland yeah, which so that's what a what a in the same bum. year that he got to interview Tom Hardy for uh, Venom. I mean, the man is living the life, and I'm not jealous. I'm not jealous, but I will be. Hey, seeing when you're him. in California, you find some celebrity, you start asking him questions. Okay, this coming and weekend, take it as an interview. <laughs> I'll be I'll be seeing him, and I'll see if he got any juicy details about hmm. about the film. You need to carry around a list of five generic questions that you can ask almost anybody. If you see a celebrity, just pop them on him. All right, Scott. Um, this trailer had a lot in it. We'll, we'll address the elephant. No Toby, no Andrew. But what did we get? What really stood out to you? What was some of the stands? Because, I mean, we we're, this isn't a breakdown show. We're not going shot by shot. We're not going to scrub through the video. Let's talk about some standouts. Some the really biggest cool. thing is that we now is confirmed that all the universes are together. The Toby uni- Tobyverse, the Andrewverse, and the uh, Tomverse however you want to say them, they're all combined because we have the villains in their representation from that, from the movie. Other than Electro, we get a new look, which by the way, big upgrade, not perfect, way better than blue to- uh, 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 Jamie Foxx. The Electro suit looks better, but we got Sandman, we got Lizard, we got Doc Ock, we got Green Goblin back, and William Willem Dafoe is actually listed in the cast on IMDb as reprising... Um, well, we get Norman a voiceover Osborne. for him, and it, this oh. is like two trailers in a row now. I my highlight has been Goblin. The totally. first trailer, everyone's like, "Oh, Doc Ock's back," and I was like, "Yes," but that pumpkin bomb that we saw, like that—that that is what got me excited. But uh, we hear a line from Willem Dafoe's Norman Osborn that says, "Like you're struggling, Peter, to have everything you want, but the world makes you want to choose." And of course, when he says choose, all I can think about is we choose who we want to be or whatever his line is in the original Spider-Man. The uh, there's it's just cool because we get it. We get we know that that means the universe. And it, uh, at the very end of the trailer, <clears throat> again, we're not doing shot by shot, but he says they're all coming and I can't stop them. They're all coming through. And then then it cuts and your uh, your trailer reaction, but which, which, by the way, go back in our videos, watch Jesse's trailer reaction as though it was Please first time that. viewing it. Um, your excitement for it, like the very first thing when it pops up, you were like, whoa. And then it jumps into the trailer. And at the very end, you're like, no, because it cuts. Yeah. They're all coming through and we can't, I can't stop them. Cut. 
and there's the purple lines coming through. And so he, he, the question is, are we getting all the Spider-Man through? Are we getting other villains through? Who else is on the other end of this portal that's coming through in the sky that's going to uh, deliver us more people? So this did a lot for making me excited for the movie and making me really want to see it. We also know that uh, we've it was revealed in this that um, the whole thing with the spell that Doctor Strange is doing is going to be right at the start of the movie. Right. That's going to set the stage. And then he botches that. And I love that they say he tells the kids that he has they have to Scooby do this thing and figure it out. Um, and uh, MJ's like, uh, I know a magic word, too. It begins with please. And, <laughs> and then he's like, please, Scooby, do this crap. And uh, I, I kind of like the dynamic. But then also that Peter attempts. I, I have a feeling everything we saw. And I know I'm getting going all over is going to be first act. It's OK. That's how early we're all over the uh, first act or part of the movie so that everything we've seen in this is not crazy deep in the movie. Like we're going to have to go a long way, which means if that's the case, we're getting Andrew, Toby and Tom working together for an extended period. The question is, are they going to bring in ghost spider? Are they going to bring in miles? Who's sneaking in else? I re into the spider verse I... was so good. And to open up the door for all this type of stuff and to get it live action this close. I, I, Man, this this really set the stage for what could be the most amazing live action Spider Man movie we've had yet. I agree. We we were talking before the show a little bit about our favorite Spider Man movies, and I said that the, you know the precursor to this film, uh, Far From Home, is my favorite live action Spider Man movie. Uh, it's really good. How will they handle the villain and stuff? And we won't diverge into that film. Um, and then Spider Verse being my overall favorite. This has the potential. I feel like John Watts has a stronger entry every time he makes a movie so far. Um, a lot of people will say Sam Raimi was the same thing in Tell 3. One is my favorite of the Raimi films, but again, we will talk about that. Um, I'm so excited to see all these villains. Uh, we would be remiss to not address the whole reason why I have this little gag here of me punching the lizard um, on, our, on our thumbnail here is because uh, there was a Brazil trailer that came out shortly after the original um, American Sony trailer. Everything's exactly the same, except they linger on that shot for an extra split second. And we were already theorizing. You have all these villains jumping at um, a Tom Holland Spider-Man, and I was talking to my wife about this. I was like, something doesn't add up. Electro's way up top. Looks like he's going over Tom Holland. You have Lizard jumping downward, and it's like, where is he going? And then Sandman's the only one that's kind of level with him. Anyways, on this extended trailer, you just see Lizard's head cock back like he just got punched in the face. And then it goes on to the next thing. Everyone's like, whoa, whoa, what was that? You either have somebody that's in, you either have John Cena, who we can't see, <laughs> punching the Lizard in the face, or somebody's been CGI like rendered out of the trailer. And at this point, I think. Listen, am I going to throw a fit if Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield are not in the film? No, I am an adult. Just like with this trailer, am I mad that they weren't in the trailer? No, it it threw me back because like I wasn't expecting them to be in the trailer. But when we got that line from Doctor Strange, I was like, mm. oh, and then they were. That's okay. That's I reacted in the moment. So I, I saw. Uh, I can't remember if it was Boss Logic or somebody like Boss Logic did the <clears throat> uh, John Cena rendering as Spider-Man, uh, which was hilarious to look at. Uh, it just so good because it it really made you think like they could literally do whatever they want for this. Uh, and my wife and I watched um, No Way Home and I was telling her about this new movie and um, she was questioning. She goes, wait a minute. So if there's a multiverse, which which Spider-Man is Tobey Maguire? He's not the he's not the out of shape like Mike or uh, Peter B. Parker, is he? <laughs> like like they can't do that to Tobey because she is in love with Tobey Maguire as Spider-Man, and so she's she likes Tom Holland, and so she enjoyed uh, watching the movies. But she's curious about this new one. Like if they do bring him in, like who's representing what? And I have a I have a thing I want to say: black suit Spider-Man, stealth suit. I don't think is in this in the trailer. trailer? I, I don't have... think is Tom Holland. I, I, I think I know your theory, but I have to I have to address a few things because I said this isn't a trailer breakdown, but the problem is I've watched a lot of trailer breakdowns, uh, which, I mean, go check out Emergency Awesome. Go check out New Rockstars. They have like a 20-minute breakdown on this trailer. It's fantastic. 
But if you freeze frame that what we've seen to be the black and gold suit, uh, there's appears to be like loose wiring coming out of it. And also there is a cell phone that is duct taped onto it. And there's a lot of really weird details. And someone's like, I think that might be his suit inside out. Because if you remember all the tech and wiring and stuff that we got to see, I think it might have been in Homecoming. Um, I don't know, but like, tell us, tell us your speculation because you, you know, you just, see him using the magic. I think it's one of the things where they, uh, it's a different Spider-Man, mm. different universe, uh, brought in <clears throat> with different tech. Uh, of course, then again, in in uh, Far From Home, we know that he has some the the ability to customize his suit to exactly how he wants it because the, the uh, Tony allows him that technology. So he can make his suit, whatever he wants, however he wants to work, however he wants, which is awesome. But when I was watching the trailer, I just had this thought. I'm like, what if that's not, and, and the tease would be that it was in plain sight from the trailer. You just didn't know. And so that turns out to be a different version of Peter Parker that we, it's not Tom Holland. That's all I can think. And if anything, if it is Tom Holland, great because he's not wearing the Iron Spider suit. Cool, he's got he's I, rocking I mean, honestly, something. I am so beyond. Uh, Why not just have him Iron carry spider forward suit? the spider suit that he was wearing at the end of Far From Home because that was such a cool suit, right? He customized that to exactly how he wanted it. Right. Uh, I just wanted to bring up that this is from the original, the first trailer, and it's Tom Holland like running through feast which is like a homeless shelter in the black suit because there's a lot there's some people speculating that somebody else some people speculating that's dr strange and that's why he's able to use magic i think it's a dr strange tampered with suit uh any other thoughts that you had about the the trailer we we see um mj falling off of the um the scaffolding very a la like Mary Jane getting dropped oh, in the first man. Spider-Man and Gwen Stacy falling in the... Well, and that's uh, how Gwen dies. And so, yeah. like, there's... I gotta tell you, my favorite theory is everyone's like, Andrew's gonna catch her. Andrew's gonna catch MJ. And I was like, I will cry. I will cry big manly tears if uh, MJ falls off the scaffolding and as a redemption, Andrew gets to catch her. Oh my goodness. You want to talk about bringing it full circle. Um, but I had the thought, like, what if they, uh, maybe it's ghost spider and Gwen Stacy from another universe catches her, you know, could be anything. Oh, <laughs> um, yeah. Spider Gwen. Um, all right. So I'll drop that out here. So I think with that, I mean, we can continue our Marvel talk and move on to the next topic, which, according to this awesome thumbnail here, is Hawkeye. Scott, I sent you a couple clips that were released from Hawkeye. And by the time that this video is up on YouTube, I will have seen the first two episodes of Hawkeye because I got some sources. So uh, Tuesday, which will be tomorrow when this comes out, Tuesday around noon, when the um, embargo lifts, uh, we should have a review of the first two episodes of Hawkeye releasing on this channel. So do not miss nice. that. And then after that, I believe we will be doing live reviews for the following three weeks for Hawkeye. Thursday nights, probably about 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Expect a rotating cast of guests there. Uh, Scott, what did you think of these clips? So the... F- Let's just break down the one with the Molotov cocktail where um, Kate Bishop's shooting uh, the bow and arrow. Uh, cool. She's not, she's, it's cool. Um, it's a good clip. Uh, you know, he breaks the window, catches the cocktail, throws it back at the guys. The guys are morons and kind of stand in it for a second and the fire, like it, it it's typical dumb henchman kind of back and forth. Um, but when she shoots the, um, uh, the fire extinguisher and she mishits it. So it launches off like a rocket instead of spraying out the fire. Um, it just, it's one of those kind of funny things And it was okay. I, I enjoyed that one. Um, just as a little snippet, I will say the second one where they're sitting in front of her parents, super cringy and forced awkwardness. And I was like, this, um, this plays so 
badly. Like, I'm not sure why this, like, I, I, it made me be like, okay, they're trying to force humor into this. But yeah, possibly. Well, it was an attempt to try and force humor into a scenario, and it seemed really uncomfortably awkward. And, um, but I, the only thing that was redeeming of the whole thing was the dad saying, hey, thanks for, you know, saving the world. And no problem. You know, uh, it, it's th- that was OK, but the the bulk of that little scene was like, oh, man, this is this is really uncomfortable banter. And it went on longer than necessary. Like that could have been ch- <laughs> chopped a little bit. She kept trying to express how how buddy buddy they were. And um, and Clint did nothing uh, to to help her whatsoever. And but even that, like it, it just was uncomfortably awkward. Which maybe that's what they're going for, and context might be the whole difference. But for me, it was like this: this didn't add value, and didn't make me want to see this anymore. Um, I I will agree with your sentiments, I think, to a point, and also say that the honestly, the most exciting or best thing that I've seen from Hawkeye thus far is uh, the when Marvel Studios had their their 2021 video that was like five minutes long that they put up during for Disney Plus Day on the app which we will talk about here shortly when we do our very late um recap of the disney plus day there is like two minutes of footage of hawkeye and it's like a chasing that was awesome i loved every Mm -hmm. second of that totally Uh, a lot of these clips they're kind of releasing i'm like yeah okay this isn't necessary like the trailers the little 30 second spots get me excited to watch the show i feel like some of these extended clips uh i don't need them you know, but it's it's only six episodes. Just let us watch. Let us watch the show. Uh, so yeah, I, I kind of feel the same way. I think the, some of the dialogue in some of the um, just atmosphere, like the awkward atmosphere, was a little cringy and forced. I do like the humor within the action beats, and I think I'm going to really like Kate Bishop. A lot of people have seen it already, are just heaping a lot of praise onto Haley Steinfeld. Uh, I have a feeling. Uh, I'm with you. I think in the action. The, the humor is properly placed. Uh, this uh, The disappointing thing about this for me, I guess, is the, the trailer did a lot for me. This did the opposite. This made me kind of go, ugh. Is this going to be one of those uncomfortable, like, awkward buddy cop movies with the old old guy and the, the young new recruit? Like, it, it didn't help. So, but yeah, the... They could have. They don't need all these extra things to, to echo what you're saying. They don't need all these tiny little trailers, because what they initially put out with the full trailer was so good, so good. It really got me excited for the show. And now these little snippets seem to be doing the opposite or having the opposite effect. Maybe I'm the only one. I don't think you are the only one. I mean, uh, when Disney announced all the shows they're going to have for Disney Plus like a while back with Marvel and stuff uh lauren was open about being like the one i'm least excited for is hawkeye and i think the trailers haven't really shifted that she's like i will watch this because it's marvel but like i don't care very much and i think that's fair what i'm excited for is that this seems to be a character exploration for both kate bishop and clint barton and i think hawkeye is at his best when it's about character because the guy with the bow and arrow usually isn't the most engaging to watch the action set pieces you know when you have Hulk and Iron Man and Thor, you got a guy shooting arrows. That's not what where your mind lands on. So I think the character bits are the best. Like when he was talking to Scarlet Witch in Age of Ultron um, and some of the stuff we got in Endgame, where it wasn't you know him killing people with a sword. It was him more so reflecting on the sins of his past that I thought was interesting. So I want to see all that tackled head on. It's only six episodes coming out this um the first two episodes drop this Wednesday, and then we'll have an episode every week uh, leading uh, up to yes, sir. Falcon Winter Soldier was six as well, correct? I believe so. I think so. We're we're looking probably forty five minute episodes, so we're probably going to get a combined three or four hour movie. Yeah, and I think WandaVision was the only one that had nine, and well, yeah. and what if? Yeah, but, but Wanda were short. WandaVision were short episodes. Right. At least the first four were what. 30 minutes max Maybe, first yeah. first two or 22 minutes there were literally sitcom episodes i like what they're doing with dropping two episodes because i think that was smart for mm-hmm. wandavision i think it's smart for hawkeye is sometimes like the pilot part 
has a lot of legwork to do to try to set stuff up and it's not necessarily the most engaging thing so giving us two episodes is like here's your setup and here's a little bit tease at the plot um i think more uh streaming services should do the multiple episode drop there's a show i'm watching on netflix right now arcane really cool they're drop they drop three episodes a week so it's like here's one through three the next week mm. it's like here's three through six and then here or four five six and then there's like seven eight nine if if you're doing shorter episodes that's a great way to go about it if you're doing longer episodes you can get away with one the one off drop but uh it better be it better have a full arc within that if it doesn't then you need more content because uh people have such a short attention span nowadays they need to take it all the options are better than the season drops i'm not a big fan of season Mm -hmm. drops anymore because because you have people who go out and watch the whole thing in one day and then ruin it online yeah and i'm also it's like i'm too busy like it's if i know ahead of time i only have to allocate an hour to something i can do that especially it's like the same time every week but it's like oh i have to go back and revisit this and finish it and sometimes I'm like eh, is it worth it do i want to start something new so i think the two best options are once a week or a few a week so that people can just kind of like you know watch it in chunks if you are a five or six episode season you could do all in one, like just drop it at once. It's not a big deal. That's like watching a couple movies. But anyways, streaming conversation, that's a, that's a whole different topic. I think we're both looking forward to the show. We're just a little cautious because not everything we've seen in the clips is working at 100% or firing on all cylinders. Is that fair to say? That's a perfect synopsis. All right. Still well, excited for the show. The, the clips didn't do anything to help it, though. <laughs> All right, so uh, moving on from the Hawkeye clips, uh, we originally were going to do a whole show about Disney Plus, but the wind in Washington had other plans. I got to tell you, this was like the most work I had put in to one of our news and views shows, like up until this point. I had so many images, graphics, videos, I had a bunch of things written down. And then we were like, I don't know, 15, 30 minutes shy and just power out. Power come back on, power out, power come back on. Eventually, I got a message from Future Sound Energy that was like, you're not getting power for another three or four hours. And I was like, I'm over it. <laughs> Just kind of kind of quit on it. But we have so many things to talk about. Um, and this is kind of going to be a really, you know, pick your favorite thing because we can't spend an hour talking about it. But we got our first look at um, Sanderson Sisters and Hocus Pocus. We got a Pixar special. Uh, got to look at Encanto a little bit. We got uh, our first behind the scenes like uh, with Warwick Davis for Willow. I thought that was a really great clip. Uh, we got some look at some Marvel stuff. What was uh, missing that a lot of people took notice is where is our Star Wars representation? Because we got a little tiny like concept art sneak peek at Obi-Wan. Everyone was thinking the Obi-Wan trailer was coming out. Me included. I saw Twitter people were calling this Obi Wan Day, like somebody's like, "Hey, it's space space Jesus trailer day!" Like, get ready, and Twitter was blown up about it. It was trending. I think Obi Wan trailer was trending, and it never happened. Uh, we didn't even get a new look at Book of Boba Fett. The only thing we got is a little teaser and an actually really cool Boba Fett documentary that I think we both watched and enjoyed quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Boba Fett documentary was great. Just to kind of see the. The history of Boba Fett uh, as a character, which is, it was very much worth seeing. Um, and at the very end, they give you 30 seconds of stuff for the new series. Kind of a synopsis of his role within um, The Mandalorian. And then kind of teasing a tiny bit of what's coming forward, but they didn't show almost anything. Um, it was really just a, a big puff piece on why a character that with four lines in the original Star Wars universe is the most renowned bounty hunter in the universe. So yeah, you can uh, go to a lot well, yeah, of casual I think we both fans. enjoyed watching that. It just was maybe not what we were totally expecting. <laughs> um, what I was going to say is uh, D23 is either this weekend or next weekend. And then you also have Star Wars Celebration to look to. Now, some of these shows are going to drop before Star Wars Celebration, like Book of Boba Fett. Uh but out of this whole thing, like we're not here to talk about like what wasn't there for Star Wars necessarily. What stood out to you, um, other than the format? Because Disney Plus Day, we were all thinking there was going to be a live stream we could watch, 
or something, but it was really just an ongoing um, Twitter drop with images and uh, just announcements and things, most of that being Marvel. And we're back. So if there's any illusion that this video was live, it is now completely <laughs> corrupted. That's okay. We, we set it off top. But going back to talking about Disney Plus Day, uh, there's a lot of things. There's talk about musicals. There's talk about new uh, shows. Um, speaking of which, Tiana from Princess and the Frog getting her own series that is a musical series. Now, is that something we've ever seen before? Definitely in like live action, or not live action, but in animated form. I think that's exciting. You got kids, Scott. There should have been a lot of exciting announcements, I think, for you, for me, and for the families. What really stood out? We will give Marvel its time to shine, but there's a lot of other stuff. Yeah, the the crazy thing is there was so much stuff announced that wasn't really announced in the normal way. Like on the Disney Plus Day video stuff, Like there's a lot of stuff that just was it made it out in like press release type of announcement uh, stuff like um diary of a wimpy kid the roderick rules which is the second part of diary of a wimpy kid which will be an animated series for both of those uh chip and dale rescue rangers is going to be picked uh, or redone with uh john mulaney and andy samberg um there's there's quite a few now i, I i'm not a fan of remake or rehash as a as a principle just because something should be left alone and some movies do not and will not ever need a sequel. A family tradition every year is to carve our pumpkins on Halloween and watch Hocus Pocus. And when I saw Hocus Pocus 2 coming, I was like, come on. No, don't be that guy. No, here's the problem. I love Hocus Pocus 1. We watch it every year. It is a family tradition. That is Let it my top five like, I can quote movies. The, it's... It's so good. <clears throat> you even named your cat Binks. Like I get it. Uh, well, old cat, yes. <laughs> yeah, old cat. Um, the we, but we watch it every year as part of a family tradition. I just hate seeing things that are are so good and should just be left alone, rehashed for uh, fan treatment or uh, fan treatment's fine, but for maybe a money grab things like that. Like let that movie die or or stay what it is, and it is a it's a it's a classic. It's a family classic. I love that movie. Right, but Scott, well, I, I got to stop you there for one second. And I'm going to say the whole like potential for success for Hocus Pocus 2 hinges on one thing. Does Ice return? Oh, my gosh. His name is Ernie. Okay. <laughs> if Ernie comes back. Oh, my gosh. Um... <laughs> hey, Hollywood. You, Who's uh, is, is Hollywood coming back? To reprise the role, uh, yeah, oh man! So. But that's that's the problem. Is that movie is so good, so quotable, and people love it so well. And I know that this is an opportunity for a new generation to get involved in the movie, and it, that's it fine. It just Tammy. It it, it always just, just it's kind of like them for some reason thinking they needed to reboot a Home Alone franchise. Which, by the way, that movie is trash. Which is very unfortunate because it's got one of the kids from Jojo Rabbit who I absolutely adore. But yeah, it's not the kid's awful. fault. It's not the kid's fault. Like that is. It's also, has Pete written. Holmes, who's hilarious. The guy that does all the uh, like, oh, X the bad man Hunter videos. Yeah. He, he's a uh, college humor. That guy's a, a legend. Um, and Pete Holmes, by the way, also had a really good talk show. It was totally worth watching. But I just. I'm disappointed when they constantly are going back and dipping in the well because they can't come up with new content. So they're going to old stuff. Um, uh, I'm I'm curious about Ice Age Adventures of Buck Wild because that's a, a fun character from Ice Age Dawn of the Dinosaurs. Um, but Ice Age is also one they keep going back and trying to drag more out of. Um, uh, Spiderwick Chron Chronicles look good. Uh, Baymax, uh, something I'm oh, excited for. I, I forgot about the Baymax trailer. I smiled through that entire thing. It looks uh, adorable. Zoo Zootopia Plus, uh, new short film series. I did. Uh, we've already watched. So there's the Olaf Presents. And we those, just watched it too because it was like it those was like are what, hilarious. 11, Eleven minutes for the whole thing. Yeah, and the 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 way he retells those stories, um, is it's just it's gold. It makes uh, you wonder storytelling is it scripted at all. Is awesome. I feel like they gave Josh Gad a microphone. They were like, "And go." Kind of, except for like uh, the, one of my favorite parts in it is. Um, the 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 snowman the giant snowman monster um yeah. when he plays 
the the cave of wonders mm -hmm. it, it's it's just it's so he's uh there's so much good in that and in just 11 short minutes to get all those movies retold in tiny form um via olaf and and um uh, uh what is it uh frozen 2 Th that is that's great and that's one we've already watched multiple times in our house because you know kids have to re-watch the same thing many a time so there was a lot of good stuff uh cars on the road will... force awakens the force awakens yeah. uh not as many as i should have um i just i was trying to give you give you a little bit of crap there because we're just grown-up kids we just keep oh, going keep going back and watch the things over and over oh uh, in, well the force awakens um might be the best Star Wars movie. But oh, you heard it here, folks. Please do not unsubscribe said, to the channel. <laughs> I said might be. I didn't say Last Jedi. I didn't say uh, The Rise of Skywalker. I said might be. It's the best of the final trilogy, but we'll get off on a way tangent. Um, back to Disney Plus Day. Uh, cars on the Road. My kids will love that. They love Lightning McQueen and Cars. Um, uh, now, the Moon Knight little teaser looked really good, but that wasn't for the kids. That was for no, you and me. That was... Um, well, I mean, let, let me know if you're ready to uh, go into Marvel. We can go into Marvel because you're 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 covering a lot of the kid stuff, and um, yeah. The thing about but Disney that was mostly is, that was mostly Disney Pixar for that chunk, right. and then the Marvel stuff. Uh, we'll go back just real quick. That that portion of the kids things, um, which also included the sequel finally for uh, Enchanted, uh, and now it's called Disenchanted, right. um, and it appears as though they're bringing back Amy Adams and Patrick you know, Dempsey. I so. never saw Enchanted until like about a year ago. Lauren showed it to me. A uh, charming, charming movie. I think it's ahead of its time. Uh, not enough people talk about Enchanted. Very excited for uh, Disenchanted. Um, I hope Rudy St. James Marsden might come back too. What about Indina Menzel? Uh, that would uh, you know, bring back everybody you can. Yeah. Uh, if you're gonna if you're gonna bring it if you're gonna do that if you're going to continue it forward stick with as many original cast members as possible in the same way that um, Hocus Pocus two is sticking with Bette Midler Sarah Jessica Parker and Kathy Najimy you have to if you're if you can bring all the original characters back can uh, you believe when Hocus Pocus two comes out that movie will be twenty nine years old the fact that there's a thirty year gap between the two. Now, now they have to use the makeup to make them look younger again and not make them look like older. Because in the older How, one, they have to like hilarious. age them and reverse it. In this one, they're going the opposite. That's that's actually really funny. <laughs> um, but it, I, I think it, I think it should be pretty good. So, well, the, what's what's great about Disney though is like some people's like, oh, I don't care about this. Disney is for all generations, all diversity and stuff. Not everything's going to be for you, but I guarantee they have something for you. And not everybody can say that. And so there's a lot of these things where it was like up and down. I was like, okay, cool. I don't care. But this I care about and this I don't. And uh, the Pixar stuff was was great. Um, not everything I'll be watching, but definitely some of it. I, I'm not going to lie and say I didn't tune in for some Star Wars and Marvel stuff because that's the goodies. But I was pleasantly surprised with like the Baymax video. And I got to, I had a smile on my face the entire time I was watching Warwick Davis interacting with the the new younger cast of uh, I was Willow. just pulling up that stuff. And I tell you what, the young man, um, uh, first the first kid he, he talks to, oh, I'm blanking on his Is name. Is that from Spider Man? No, from Willow, the new Willow movie. Uh, no, 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 I know, but is it the actor from Spider Man that plays Flash? No, no, Tony, no, Tony no, Rivioli. No. Okay. No, he was the last one around the table. <clears throat> the first one, last name's Brick, I think. Uh, uh, well, whatever. The, the the main guy, he has a very much Mad Mardigan face. When I saw his picture, I immediately I thought, is that. this Mad Mardigan's son? Because Sad Mardigan. Val Kilm, uh, <laughs> um, uh, the, uh, uh, well, actually, it would be uh, son or whatever his first name would be, uh, son of uh, or Madsen, because they always put the the son of. Um, but he has that look like Val Kilmer, and when I saw that initially, I immediately thought, "Oh my gosh!" Like they are totally pulling this guy to be the younger version of Mad Mardigan in the next one, or Mad Mardigan's son, uh, which would be fantastic, uh, because Mad Mardigan is such an integral character with the original one. I'll, I'll be honest of all the things uh that they announced seeing that snippet of warwick warwick davis introducing the cast of the new one just made me so happy it was a little 
awkward. It was kind of funny because he's so much older than everybody else now on the show. And the, like, they had to remind him that this isn't a Star Wars movie. Um, even though he was like in all the Star Wars movies. Uh, and they were like, oh yeah, I remember you from Solo. And he's like, no, that's that's the one I wasn't in. But anyways, um, the, uh, you know, it's funny. Well, it's, it's funny. Warwick says like, I haven't watched that one. He's in the, he's in a scene with that actress. Yes. At, towards that's the end right. of Solo. Um, oh no. Infant's Nest is the only thing that comes to mind. I'm forgetting her actual name. Um, but yeah, oh, the, I told my wife that and she's like, who? And I was like, never mind. Um, about that, that actress had been in so many other things. She was in, uh, um, yeah, she's been in a bunch of stuff, but the Aaron Kellyman, and I'm going to nice. pretend like I came up with that off the top of my head. Perfect. And cut the, and cut. <laughs> uh, the, the great thing about this was Willow is such a fond childhood memory. I'm glad they're giving it a series to explain some more. Um, we, I think we chatted about this personally a couple weeks ago that that show or the movie Willow did not stand the test of time. It's it's a good movie. I really enjoy it, but I love it because of the nostalgia attached to my childhood. When you watch it, the CGI, the action, the acting, a lot of it is just kind of like, wow, this is weak. The storyline, like arc of the people, some are super rushed. Some just don't make any sense. I'll tell you what is there is the imagination. So I hope that's what oh carries gosh. through with mm. this new adaptation of it. Can I also say um, the the evil witch um, at the end, like that she is scary as all hell. Like that movie is it, it gets you, especially as a kid, that really scared the crap out of me. Um, she was intimidating. And uh, the final scene in the in the castle uh, is very much intense. And, and uh, for a younger kid, uh, I didn't remember it being as intense, but I remember thinking it was scary. And then watching it as an adult, I'm like, that's one of the best parts of the movie because it really brings all that stuff home. Uh, but then the, the part where he jumps on top of the monster uh, uh, on his back when Mad Morgan's riding the three-headed kind of dinosaur thing. Um, just there, there's so much... Uh, bad green screen cgi <laughs> that it's it's uh it actually makes it endearing it makes you love it a little bit more because it's so it's so uh not of the caliber of what you can pull out today but i'm really grateful that they are dragging this thing back um and that warwick davis is still around to reprise the real the role of willow because literally it's like he's a farmer who one day they're like nope he's a wizard and then he had to go out and be a wizard with no explanation of how he had wizarding abilities. You're a wizard, Willow. <laughs> <laughs> was it his 11th birthday? I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, no, he, I think he was like 60. Oh, no, no. I no he, he had kids. Uh, yeah, if it was his 11th birthday, uh, they work in different ways. I'm going to list things, and then you tell me what stands out. Starting with, first of all, I squealed. X-Men 97, they're bringing back the animated show and extending, continuing the story, bringing back the original creators as um, producers and consultants. Couldn't be more excited. What if season two? A give me, obviously. Uh, a new title card for Miss Marvel, She-Hulk, which we saw a little bit from, Moon Knight, I Am Groot animated series, Spider-Man Freshman Year animated series. Uh, I think a lot of us are kind of tired of doing the origins, but supposedly this might tie in with the MCU and be like Tom Holland's origin, which is cool to see. I don't need it. If I have time, I will watch it. This is not on the top of my list. Echo, a character that is going to be introduced in Hawkeye, who I believe in the comics is the daughter of Kingpin. And there's been a lot of rumors about Vincent D'Onofrio. We can address that. Ironheart with Riri Williams, who's getting introduced in Wakanda forever, which is now on hold. Get your vaccines, people. Uh, Marvel Zombies animated series. We are assuming this uh, takes place uh, in the same universe I was set up with What If, like a continuation of that maybe. A lot of, uh, hopefully a lot of fun. We can dive into that more. And then Agatha House of Harkness, which I'm super pumped to see. Uh, not sure if I missed anything there. That is what I have here on this list. What stands out to you, ma'am? Uh, well, you jumped over Moon Knight. <clears throat> I said, yeah, I jumped over it because we we're going to talk about all the stuff that has footage. Oh, down. gotcha. Okay. No, no just, as, far as, just, as far as just title announcements, like they threw the name out there, uh, I would say of those things, 
Agatha House of Harkness because we already have a good introduction to her character via WandaVision. And I'll be interested to see, are they going to go back and show her? Because we already we know now she's mentally controlled by Wanda. Um, right. Uh, That's one she, of the things I was wondering is I'm kind of equally curious. Do we go forward or do we go back? Both, I hope I think, we go back. As... Show us the yeah. medieval Agatha Harkness as she's building Ooh. her powers and absorbing them from other witches. Like, I, I think that would be the way to go. And I, it'd be a, a cool take for Marvel to go a different direction with the character and, and show some medieval sorcery. So I hope that's the direction to go. So um, House, House of Harkness plus um, uh, Catherine Hahn. That's all you need. So good. So she's fantastic in most things, but uh, as Agatha Harkness, she really was a scene stealer. Um, so I think that's she chewed all the scenery that could be chewed, and I loved every second of it. Uh, so I think those one that I th of the ones you just listed, I say that j is what jumps out. Now, uh, X Men '97 uh, grew up with those cartoons; um, they were really good, uh, and also excited for the uh, Spider Man freshman year animation, um, where they're going to be. Uh, kind of using the older style animation to tell the earlier part of Peter's arc. So now um, I have a question for you with the X Men ninety seven thing. This seems possibly symbolic. The timing of it, Marvel recently got X Men back. Do we think that one of the reasons they're revitalizing this as a way to introduce X Men, this particular X Men, to a new set of audiences? is Kevin Feige might be taking inspiration, obviously not bright, colorful, like, you know, yellow tights and stuff like that, but like the the themes that were present in the original show and the characterizations of the X-Men. A lot of people say this is the best it's ever been, and I tend to agree with them. Uh, do we think that, not that this is in the MCU, obviously, but do we think that this is a present, like, inspiration and a reason why we're getting reintroduced to them now? Well, and these stories are supposed to be set into the 1990s s series timeline. So it's going yes. back into that timeline, uh, just new stories within that timeline. So it's not going to affect the MCU. It's not going to no. affect uh, any live action X-Men movies coming forward. Um, but totally, I, I think nostalgia wise, people loved that series. The animation, the styling, the coloring, um, the way the stories were told in the episodes. Uh, they were great. That's the one of the best runs that X-Men ever had. And so uh, I like the idea of them going back. Plus uh, people we've seen with a lot of the Spider-Man, gosh, there's so many animated Spider-Man series. And some Spectacular Spider-Man's the best, hands yeah. down. <laughs> well, but then there are people who say Ultimate Spider-Man is better. Um, and there's not as many, I'll, I'll admit. And I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I, I just say, there's so many iterations and some people love certain ones to go back and find one that is kind of universally loved and just build on it. Perfect. Introduce it to new people, put new storylines out there, uh, get those characters back engaged in, in front of people. Sadly, the last, the lasting taste in a lot of people's mouth for X-Men is dark Phoenix. Like the, the kind of just crud that, Fox pushed out right at the end to capitalize on the dollars of the franchise. So it's time to go back and remind people of the golden age of X-Men. I'm here for it, man. Absolutely here for it. Let's talk um, because we're we're running long, but we had so much to talk about. It's perfectly, it's it's fine. Some of the stuff is going to get cut down in post anyways. But uh, let's talk about what we actually got in that Marvel preview. Uh, preview. That's an interesting way to say that. Uh, we got to look at Miss Marvel, She-Hulk, and Moon Knight. What stood out to you? What did you like? Uh, Miss Marvel, I think, is one of the characters I, I'm least familiar with, so I think that looked interesting. Um, also, also, just Marvel going forward with bringing uh, uh, diversity into the universe, um, bringing diversity both as far as ethnicity as far and as as far as gender, and so uh, I think that show has a lot of potential. Um, yeah, very much akin to um, Captain Marvel, uh, and I, I think it's got a lot of upside. Moon Knight is the one that really seems like, is this something that Marvel is ready to bite off? Because Moon Knight is dark. It dark, is dark. dark. But um, you cannot a do preview. a Moon Knight episode without buckets of blood. Um, and so I'm curious as to, are they really committed to going where Moon Knight should go? Or are they going to do some variation of it that's PG-13 
borderlining are. You got to go all the way with Moon Knight. The one thing you can push in PG-13 is violence because America is the way that America is. If True. you you can show like pretty much a decapitation and it's PG-13, but if you show a nipple, it's rated R. That's how our country works. Um, as long as I, there's not blood spurting out with the decapitation. Exactly. Well, I mean, like because it was animated form in What If, we got to watch Thanos get sliced in half. And I was like, oh, my God. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Or some of the things that we saw in Marvel well, Zombies. Well, and then you saw the zombie. Yeah, <laughs> like they were doing some crazy stuff. So um, I think Moon Knight tonally, that's what all, pretty much all we can react to is the tones that we're getting hints of here because they're very short. They're like 25, 30 second little, little spots. Uh, it feels very Batman. It feels very Daredevil Netflix. I like the darkness of it. I like whatever accent Oscar Isaac's doing. If you don't know Moon Knight, he's got uh, multiple personalities. He's got DID. And if you see, there's a shot of him walking by a reflection. He's got two additional reflections that stay there as he moves on. It looks brutal. What we see of the costume looks great. I love the choice of colors and shots. And I think it's going to be a really interesting character exploration, unlike anything that we've seen. And if you you can look up right now, there's there's training videos of Oscar Isaac getting ready for this role, and it's intense. Well, not to change too far a subject, but you can see his fitness level even with Dune. Uh, where we got uh, to see a lot more of Oscar Isaac than I think people were prepared for. Um, and uh, you can tell he's in shape. He's been working out, prepping for this role. Uh, and I just want to say, if you're going to play multiple personalities and multiple characters within a character, uh, Oscar Isaac is the caliber actor to be able to pull that off in the same way that um, with... Uh, um, Oh my gosh, why am I blanking? Um, the split. Um, oh, James uh, McAvoy yes. playing the multiple personalities. You need a caliber of actor that can really commit to each individual person as their own entity. And I think Oscar Isaac might be the perfect actor for this role. Once he was cast, I don't think anybody went, oh, I don't know. No, everyone went, oh, oh yeah. yeah, okay. It's, you can to- it's totally see that. Okay, so yeah, I think we're both really excited for Moon Knight. Um, also, I like, even though it was, once again, a tease, what we're getting from She-Hulk, it's definitely, they're showing that it's going to be kind of like a procedural um, courthouse, maybe sort of comedy. And we do get Mark Ruffalo, at least in the teaser, fully rendered again as Professor Hulk, which, in his arms, fine. So we have some questions. Did this happen before Endgame? Is this well after Endgame? Because last time we saw him, spoiler alert for Shang-Chi, the post credit scenes for Shang-Chi, he was back in Bruce Banner form. He had his arm in a sling. Uh, so I don't know where the timeline's going to be, but I'm really excited for this. Um, Tatiana Muslani is an absolute talent. She has great comedic timing. Um, I really want to see how the character is fully realized because it looks almost like they're doing paint, like body paint over um, CGI, which I think for She-Hulk would actually be refreshing. Or maybe I it's a blend. I'm sure it'll be some kind of hybrid thing. They're, they're so good with the technology now that they'll do certain amounts that are practical effects so you can see maybe the face and everything uh, with paint and stuff like that. But then with the body to add the bulk, you're just going to, you almost have to use some form of CGI. Uh, the question is uh, to what extent, what level, but it looks cool. And uh, the opportunity to get Mark Ruffalo back in the mix because uh, I think universally fans feel like that's the one space we got robbed is we did not get enough Mark Ruffalo as the Hulk, especially with Endgame and Infinity War, where yes. we thought he would play such a larger role. Um, and apart from the snap uh, and his kind of little bit of comedy with, you know, the computers where he's bashing them with his hand, like trying to get the old TV to work, like, hold on, as he's typing things oh, i'll be i'll get you right back one second we just didn't get enough of him and so to be able to see him again is great uh still holding on that somewhere down the line there will be a hulk movie with mark ruffalo but it probably they won't ever happen just gotta get those um distribution rights back from universal all right uh so i mean more or less uh marvel zombies i think we're curious about but uh we do have other things to talk about still this is a big episode big news and news episode so please if you haven't already like the video subscribe share it we need big views for this one because we're giving you the news news and your views all right so uh that pretty much wraps up i think the disney plus conversation yeah i mean there's there's a lot of things 
like I said, we don't have time to do all of it. But I did say at the top of the show. Oh, go ahead, Scott. Oh, no, I was just going to say, like, there's there's some other things they're bringing to it, like Prey, which is a part of the Predator franchise. There's there's just some other things True. they're doing. Um, but really, we've as far as our audience, really, the Disney Plus, the Marvel portion uh, and knowing that uh, for Lucasfilm for the uh, Star Wars universe, we got a really long backstory for um, for Boba Fett, but no nothing leaked or nothing snuck in for Kenobi like we and I think universally every fan really just desperately wants to see Ewan McGregor standing toe to toe with Darth Vader um, but we'll see when it comes out well we, we know it's going to happen and we might know kind of what it's going to look like so a little concept art of them crossing blades it's, everyone is universally excited to see Obi-Wan Kenobi uh, and I was really, really, really hoping for something. Um, but, you know, you get what you get, and you don't throw a fit. So as I said at the top of the show, um, we did have some announcements to do. So before we get into what we are watching or reading, I want to talk about some of the things coming up here. Now, the first one, I don't really have a graphic ready, but um, as we mentioned earlier, we will be doing Hawkeye reviews. The first one should be dropping, I believe, uh, Tuesday at noon which is when the embargo for the show lifts, and that'll be for the first two episodes. And then after that, Thursdays, we will be doing a live stream. Join us there on the channel here about 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. But something that Scott and I were talking about uh, just the last couple of days that we wanted to do is a Spider-Man rewatch discussion leading up to No Way Home. Now we wanted to do it differently than a lot of what you're seeing online. We're not just going to sit, review them movie by movie. We are going to talk about portrayals and toby andrew tom what they got right what needs work what we wish we could have seen um and just how they're overall presented in movies so our first episode is coming up here into the toby verse from flick and reel where we talk about spider-man spider-man 2 and yes our favorite spider-man 3 with sandman the other goblin i mean he wasn't the hobgoblin i don't know uh venom and uh the whole mess that was that but these movies get more and more relevant by the day as we get more and more from No Way Home and we are getting closer to that release. So our plan is to do it um, the three weeks leading up to No Way Home. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. Scott, are you excited to talk Spider-Man? Very much so. Um, each one of these three different franchises uh, brings something unique to the uh, to the universe uh, or multiverse of Spider-Man and or Spider-Verse, uh, ex Spider -verse. exploring <laughs> that is going to be kind of fun uh, because also, uh, you know, I'm 10 years or 12 years older than you are. And so uh, my take on it, it might be slightly different because I was in a different stage of life when Tobey Maguire was Spider-Man um, and the same thing with Andrew Garfield. And I think with Andrew Garfield, we'll be able to get a good look at the, um, well, we'll get way off into it, but you know, the, the, the desire to have that one more movie. He didn't get right. the third. And, and now with Toby, Toby didn't get the fourth because no, there Toby was, was supposed be, to have the fourth one. There was supposed to be a John Malkovich vulture, Bruce Campbell coming in as Quentin Beck, all kinds of stuff. And those, oh those are goodness. things that we will talk about. Again, the focus will be on the Spider-Man portrayal itself, but I'm sure we can't escape talking about the movies as a whole. No, but it, to be able to, I'm, I'm excited because we're breaking them down this universe, ver, not versus, but this universe, than this universe and the pros and cons organic web shooters versus uh, synthetic, you know, that kind of conversation. And so it's going to be a good breakdown into each one of those. And uh, how was the treatment of the character of Peter Parker in each by itself? Was it faithful? Which one resonated with, uh, with, with us, with us the most? Wow. That shouldn't have been that hard to say. <laughs> <laughs> I had a full blown stroke on camera. Uh, all right, so uh, keep an eye out for that. Very excited to do that. Now let's roll into our wrap-up of the show, which is what are we watching and reading? Um, definitely watch-heavy for me. Haven't been reading stuff. Scott, I'll let you take this one first. Uh, what's What's been happening? Well, I went back and I rewatched, or I think it's the first time I've actually watched straight through uh, Spider-Man Far From Home. Um, I'd seen chunks of it, but always in like chunky parts. So last night I sat down and watched it all the way through in one shot. Uh, really enjoyed that. 
Um, but I'm also, I'm always on a nostalgic kick and watching older movies um, uh, and uh, specifically older action movies. Uh, so Westerns, you know, I watched Unforgiven not, not too long ago, just to kind of, it's always a good time to throw a Clint Eastwood movie <laughs> on, especially uh, an older Clint Eastwood when he's still tougher than most people. Um, but you also see a little bit of the grizzled wisdom. Uh, as far as books, I just uh, finished listening to the Giver, which I remember as a kid when I read that book in school, it was one of the first books I ever read that made me cry. I got to ask it. you, when you listen to it, do you imagine Jeff Bridges or was that? Unfortunately, I think it was hard because I used to not. And there, on the cover of The Giver, there's an old man pictured. And then when you watch the movie, you see Jeff Bridges. By the way, I really liked Jeff Bridges as The Giver. Oh, and okay. I actually hadn't seen it. I have... Um read the book when I was very young. I didn't watch the movie because the trailers put me off. Uh, the movie is okay. But the book is also as an audio book. It's only four and a half hours. I listened to it in one day. That's very yeah, short. It's short. Um, uh, it's kind of like the Lion, Witch, and the Wardrobe. They seem like bigger books. And then when you go back and listen to them, you're like, wow, this is actually really short. You could take down... And there's actually four books to the the Giver universe, um, in which a lot of people don't know. And so I'm working on the other ones. Uh, but when I, when I listened to it, I... I was picturing Jeff Bridges, but then mm -hmm. I had to mentally tell myself, don't, don't stick a voice or don't stick a face to the character. Let it be who he is. Because the other thing is in the movie adaptation, they portray it as an older teenager in the book. He's 11 and 12 years old, much younger. And our Jonas is uh, the main character. And so there's, it was good. It was nice to go back and revisit a book from my childhood that emotionally connected with me. Then it didn't connect as hard emotionally with me now, but it's still such a good story. Um, but it, it, it echoes 5 billion different dystopian society uh, books or utopian society where the world has fallen apart and they've put everyone into this perfect pair. The world has gone to crap. They've put people in this pod and created a perfect universe, but it's hyper controlled. And so the idea is how do you break out of the hyper controlled society? It echoes equilibrium basically uh yeah it, it literally is an echo of almost every dystopian or utopian society book which is in the teen genre of books that is like the most common one well i uh saw a couple movies i was in theaters a couple times this week um and we'll be watching another movie i was gonna go to theaters but it's on hbo max and it feels like i can actually get away with watching on HBO Max and I hate myself for it. But one of the movies I saw was the Kristen Stewart starring uh, Spencer based off of Princess Diana and a little bit of insight into the royal family. Now, it's a movie that is very specifically focused on Diana. Don't expect a royal family film. That's not what it is, but it is about uh, her experience. And it is a, a little bit of something where it's not a shot for shot retelling of something that happened to her in her life. They're trying to capture an emotion or a feeling. Uh, and anyone like me, I didn't, I do not follow the Royal family. Uh, my wife, Lauren is much more of a, um, a Diana enthusiast knows a lot more about what's going on there. So for me, it was purely educational and it's uncomfortable, but in a very well-made way, I thought the movie was fantastic Kristen Stewart. Now, if you still think of her as Bella from Twilight, here's your chance to catch her doing something that will blow you away. There's a lot of talk about Oscar noms. I think she's very deserving of them. I won't go into a full movie review. Uh, it was it was great. Um, I'm glad to because me myself, I had not really seen Kristen Stewart in anything outside of Twilight, but I kept hearing that she was good in other things. I got to I got to finally experience that, just like Robert Pattinson. Um, I liked when Water for Elephants, he was great in Lighthouse, and now he's gonna be Batman. Can't wait for that. Anyways, go see Spencer, um, or watch it when it comes out, but just definitely witness the film. It is worth watching. Scott, did you have something to add? Uh she's done a couple biopics now. Uh even uh one of them uh was a rock star biopic, I believe about Joan Jett. Um, I might be wrong on the the person, but she's done a couple biopics and she is actually more gifted actress than she's given credit for people always paying her for um her kind of uh one emotion type of acting like she's got that the same expression and snow and the huntsman was also real bad real bad 
Uh, I actually enjoy that movie, not necessarily because of her, but I do like Chris Hemsworth, and I thought and um, uh, Charlize Theron as uh, the uh, witch. I really enjoyed Snow White and Huntsman. So I know that's uh, I, I might be in the minority on that, but I, I find it entertaining to watch. Uh, she's not the saving grace in that movie. <laughs> Luckily, uh, he does a great job. Uh, Hemsworth does. And Charlize Theron is scary as the witch. Uh, was, but that was great casting. I'm, I'm glad you, you know, it's an opportunity. If people haven't seen her in a dramatic role, that's well done. Take it on. And princess Di's story is a roller coaster of one. It's, um, it is a, a longstanding tragedy. Um, very much so. And, you know, one thing that I've told that's consistent is that she lives for her kids. And that's something that you can see in this movie. And, um this it's yeah it's definitely a fill in the blank it's like we know these types of things happen to her so here's a movie that represents like what a three-day experience in the life of princess Di could have been probably was so it's a little bit it's it's slightly speculative but you feel the earnestness in it um and it feels very authentic but I, I think I will say you have to be willing to invest in this because it's you know there's no action there is a lot of um, tense moments but you need to be invested in the story from the get otherwise you may be bored I was not bored I loved it I thought it was great uh, probably a hard rewatch though Good. probably a hard rewatch saw one other thing not gonna spend as much time on it I saw Ghostbusters Afterlife I thoroughly enjoyed it I do have a first. Uh, fresh out of the theater reaction on our channel. So just click that after you watch this. Uh, it's about six minutes long, really quick. Uh, good time. It's it's the best Ghostbusters since the original. I think it might have more entertainment value than the original, but that's just me. Just so Ghostbuster so, Afterlife was yeah, good? I, yeah, it was good. And I think that came through okay on my end. Uh, so I recommend everyone go see it. This is definitely one that you want to go see in theaters. Um, see it with a uh, big screen, good sound if you can. And if you have any investment in the Ghostbusters franchise, be prepared to cry because I didn't think that was going to happen, but it, it snuck up and it got me. Uh, with... That has been a consensus I've heard from a lot of people on Twitter uh, and on Facebook and social media is uh, nobody's been leaking spoilers or anything, but there's been a lot of talk of the emotional connection that this mo movie uh, makes is is there and it really does a great job of bridging the gap between the the 84 all the way to now um with star or with star wars with ghostbusters in order yeah, to that's the cro you spoiled the crossover scott ah uh turns out that the uh photon they're, packs are actually they're busting, lightsabers they're busting force <laughs> ghosts it's actually uh they get anakin skywalker shows up as a forced ghost and <laughs> Murray shows just the up. young anakin skywalker yeah, the old right. anakin skywalker is still out there you just need an old vhs tape to have him that's right <laughs> all right guys well that pretty much wraps up the show today thank you for staying with us for a long one we had a lot of fun doing this and again stay tuned for our hawkeye review and our spider-man discussions Thank you to everyone watching for taking the time out of your day to stop by and talk film and television with us. We loved having you. Leave a comment below letting us know if you thumbed up the video or became a new subscriber. Subbing to the channel guarantees you weekly movie news discussions, late night Waller cooler talks. That's right. We have our Sunday night speakeasies and much more. With that, we ask that you always remember to keep it real and we will see you next time. Bye guys. Thank <laughs> you.